Hi, this is Sabrina from A Space to Create Art, and I kind of wanted to go through my introduction to art curriculum and show you guys how to use it. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is, is download the scope and sequence chart and kind of go through and read this because there's a lot of different information in here that's going to help you figure out how to use these materials in the most effective way. So um, for day one, you're going to do the icebreaker and student interest survey. And all this does is it helps you understand your students, their learning preferences, their strengths and needs. Um, and it also gives them, it gives you a good start to the year, a great culture, because you're asking them how they want to see their classroom, how they envision the semester going. And then there's just a fun activity that they do where they create a design using 10 circles and five lines. Um, and it's just, it's just a great way to start the semester. That first day of school is the worst for me, and that's just a fun and easy thing to do the first day of school. So then um, week one, I always do color scheme name tags. The reason I do this is because um, in high school anyway, kids are always switching in and out of class. So you don't want to do anything that's really um, something that you're going to want them to learn and have for the rest of the school year. You know, you want to be able to assess their abilities and you want them to start an engaging, fun activity, but you don't want it to be really instructional at this point. So that's the color scheme name tags. Um, although they do learn about Paul Clay, they learn about art, how art can communicate through the element of color, and it's just a great first lesson. Um, weeks two and three are really um, starting to go through the elements and principles of art. So they have to start to understand how elements and principles of art will help them create artwork that will communicate what they want to communicate in their art. Um, and basically there's a presentation that takes them through all of the elements of principles of art and then they start doing these small little compositions, um, emotion of line and shape and emphasis. So with the emotion of line lesson, they draw, they write out an emotion and then they try to draw that emotion using lines. And I usually start by having students come up to the board. I say, okay, anxiety, who can come up to the board and draw anxiety using only lines? And it's just a fun way to start the lesson. Shape and emphasis, man, I cannot believe the artwork that the kids create for this. This is an amazing little lesson and it's, again, a small little canvas. Um, and then you go into color, uh, doing a color wheel, but uh, having a little bit of a twist in that it's a motif. So um, again, this is a great lesson because um, students can kind of self-regulate the difficulty level. Um, Special education students can use simpler shapes. Um, you can even provide them with a template, like um, just a circle. Um, they can do a star. They can do all kinds of things. But then the more advanced kids are going to do stuff that you're not going to believe. It's amazing. Um, and I have examples of all that stuff on my Pinterest board, on my Instagram. So definitely go in and take a look at those. And then there are examples also in the presentation. Um, then you're going to go into Doodle Landscapes. So Doodle Landscapes is just um, awesome because it talks about line, it talks about rhythm, it talks about repetition, it talks about so many elements and principles of art, as well as how to create depth um, using value. Um, and uh, it's just, it's a great way um, for students to learn about Zentangles, um, and it also teaches them a lot about all of the elements and principles of art. Um, then I go into the drawing unit. Now this is by far one of the more rigorous units um, because students have a hard time learning to draw from observation and that's how they start. Um, but I do have ways um, to help students like special education students by using a piece of plexiglass um, and I always try very hard to make it so that every student can be successful, especially in an introduction to art class. And um, then they're gonna learn how to draw on a grid. A lot of kids who think they can't draw absolutely can draw. It's just that they haven't ever learned to draw on a grid. Um, they're gonna do some observational drawings, learn about contour lines, and there are videos that go with that. 
And by the way, up here is a list of worksheets um, that can also be used with any of these lessons because I have all of my Elements and Principles of Art worksheets included in this packet. And so this just, you don't have to use all of these, but this is a great um, supplement to the lessons that you're teaching. They can be used as sub-lessons as well. Um, and they can also be used for early finisher work. Um, but then you're going to go into art movements. You know, you have to have a little bit of art history for a quality art curriculum. Um, they're going to create a wire sculpture based on an art movement. Um, and they even have like these, I have these index cards with presentation videos of the different art movements so that they understand it. Um, there's an elements and principles of art definition sheet and then their peer critique sheets because um, they can do a critique at the end. Um, I also have them uh, write uh, for the end of this a reflection on how they use the elements and principles of art in their actual sculpture. Um, then there's an abstract art unit um, where you talk about Kand Kandinsky, um, the father of abstract art, uh, learn how to create art from music, and then they create this abstract oil pastel using um, directions that I provide through the PowerPoint presentation. And again, these just cover a ton of the elements and principles of art. Um, there's also supportive worksheets inside that are specific to this lesson. Um, and then I have additional mini lessons that you can use when and where appropriate, such as like the Creative Limits Teabag Art. Um, I just included also a virtual museum tour of the Art Institute of Chicago, which is all digital and it's in Google Slides. Super cool. And then finally, you have a final portfolio. This is how I wrap up the semester, again in high school and middle school as well. That last week of school, you're taking finals. Um, kids are all over the place. Like a lot of times the schedule changes, you have shortened classes. Um, so this is just a great way to wrap up the semester um, where uh, kids collect all their work completed over the uh, course of the semester or the course of the year. And then they have an art show, and it's just a fun way to end the semester. There's also a full semester materials list, um, and it just kind of takes you through each lesson and all of the materials that you need for that lesson. Um, and then um, also for the introduction to art, there's a um, syllabus that's included. So I hope this kind of helped you understand uh, my introduction to art unit. Um, it's again, it is a full semester of high school art, um, easily a full semester of middle school and full year of middle school, depending on how many times you meet with your students. So I hope you enjoyed this. And also, oh, I also uploaded on here how to open a PowerPoint presentation or a Word document in Google because you can also do that. Um, so yeah, and I also have 12 sub-lessons, which, which is obviously not in the scope and sequence, but that's in addition. So I hope you enjoyed this video, um, and I hope you guys have a great school year next year.